My guest today is David McAgon. David, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, David? It's, uh, it's I'm doing great. It's, uh, I think enough time has passed. It's been like six years it's since been, you were last on the show. Oh man, that's, that's <laughs> been six. <laughs> it's been about five. And I know actually, I know this because when uh, we we were in Columbus, Ohio, and it was you and Ryan Croker. Or I'm probably saying his name wrong. No, you got it. And uh, he, uh, and it was I was at the time I was waiting to hear whether or not I was accepted to Microsoft. I had interviewed and done all the interviews. I was just sitting and waiting. <laughs> well, I'm, I never congratulated you on that, so uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the welcome to was, the company. So yeah, so finally, I, the story has a happy ending. <laughs> and uh, um, So that's how I know the time. It's uh, uh, been five and a half years since I joined, so it's probably about five and three quarters. A little too long. We're, yeah, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> well, you're back, the story has a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are we gonna talk about today? Uh, well, considering what we've been working on this week, I figured uh, we could talk a little bit about uh, data and streaming. Uh-huh. So, um, so I know what data is. What is streaming? So the, the general idea is when, when you think about how you typically query data, mm-hmm. um, let's say that you wanted to, um, I don't know, look at some flow per minute you know, from an IoT device, for instance. You okay. want to do minimum and maximum values of some device, or like maybe car velocities. All right. All right. Um, there's, there's plenty of ways to query that, like SQL for a relational database, for example. Right, so the problem is those are really expensive queries. Expensive in terms of? Well, you have a lot of data. Okay. So you're constantly hitting some type of static data store, right? Okay. Here. I mean, you're writing, like let's say you were talking about SQL Server. Mm-hmm. So you're writing thousands of rows to SQL Server, and now mm-hmm. you're going to do that okay. query maybe every minute, every 10 minutes, and that's that's pretty hefty. So it's just in terms of time and mm-hmm. uh, compute power. Right. Okay. And then uh, that applies also for NoSQL database, whether you're using something like Cosmos DB or MongoDB or Cassandra or any type of data store mm-hmm. where you're trying to do some analysis of the data. Uh-huh maybe close to real time. So it's just, it's a lot of resources and it's a lot of demand on the database system. Yeah, I've, no, I've known this a long time. The writing anything to disk tends to be a bottleneck. That tends to take a lot more time than anything else. Mm-hmm. And and it's just the resources because imagine also at the same time that you're trying to do all these aggregations, mm-hmm. you want to use the database for something else, like maybe serving data on a website or, mm-hmm. or on an API. So you're now doing a little bit of competition on the resources oh, okay. as so well. Okay, my, so my process might be writing to that database and somebody else's process might be reading from that database. Mm-hmm. So also you've yeah. got that contention as well. Uh, but in the past, that's all we had. If we wanted to do any kind of queries or any kind of analysis, first thing we did was persist it to a database. Yep. And now that's not true. Right, so that's where, where the idea of streaming comes okay. in. So imagine being able to look at data while it's happening in real time. So in other words, like an IoT device, maybe it's a car emitting the speed it's going mm-hmm. and the, the compass direction. So you wanna know like average speed for a car over a certain period of time. Maybe it's emitting data like once a second. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of data coming in. So now we have streaming tools that let you do queries on real time data. Like as the data is coming in. So even before it's written to disk, while it's still in memory, we can well, query. there there might be some intermediate disk writes because okay. you want a durable type of mm-hmm. uh, streaming environment, but it's it's not writing to your destination database. Okay. So maybe let's say you're aggregating data over a one minute period of time. Mm-hmm. It the SQL queries might look the same, where you're saying get me the average for the velocity, mm-hmm. but maybe you specify a window. You know, over over this one minute period, I want you to aggregate it. Mm-hmm. So as data is coming in, uh, it's being buffered for that one minute period. Oh, okay. And then at the end of the one minute, now the aggregation takes place. I see. So the data is accumulating and being stored in an optimum, like, I guess it's partitioned, somewhere in your streaming environment. And then you could choose to do something at the end of the minute. So let's say you're calculating speed per minute, you could then write that aggregate out to your final database. So instead of the one per second, okay. Uh, values that's coming from the vehicle or from whatever device you're you're tracking um, now you're writing once per minute that's a significant reduction all the aggregation work is doing right. is happening upstream okay and you could do that to be fair you could write it first aggregate it, and then write it somewhere else again mm-hmm. but is, is latency the main motivator to reduce that latency for streaming that well there's there's latency because at the end of the minute mm-hmm. the aggregation is done and yep. and now 
and you don't have any other queries to do. You just yep. emit the answer yeah. somewhere, which could take uh, very little time. Okay. But there might be other operations you want to do. Maybe the way you store the data ultimately doesn't make it easy to do aggregation. Okay. So maybe the way you partition data on hmm. on the database would require you to go across partitions okay. to get all of this data or to go hunting for the data. Hmm. But as it's streaming in, you have the data right there in the one minute bucket. You partition it the way you need it. I see. Yeah. Uh, and you've the, the use case you gave was uh, where our ultimate goal is to store it in a database somewhere. But that there's other things you could do with that data as, you're, uh, as it's streaming. You could, for example, send it off to some other system or Oh, sure. Uh, drop it on a queue or uh, yep. you know, yeah. have, have some code pick it up and run some workflow around it. Right. So you could write the raw data out. Uh -huh. So um, if you want to preserve that raw data. So mm -hmm. you could be writing that to maybe, imagine writing that to blob storage. Right. So every minute just dumping mm -hmm. to a CSV, yep. for instance. Because maybe you really don't need to worry about processing that again mm -hmm. unless you're doing some type of analytics in the future. Right. So store it in a blob every minute and then store the aggregate in your live database okay. where you need it. But you're right, you don't have to write it directly to a database. You could write it to, say, a queue, uh, Azure Event Hubs or Kafka or somewhere, and then somebody else downstream can pick that up. Yeah, and or you do it. both. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's talk about some of the technologies that are involved in uh, streaming data and analyzing streaming data. Okay, so what the, m the most popular tool that I've seen these days tends to be Spark. So Spark is a general purpose engine where you have um, a query engine built in. Okay. And uh, Spark is really nice because it has uh, time-based queries, window-based queries. Hmm. So you could say query over a specific period of time. Hmm. Um, and in fact, the windowing goes a little further than that because sometimes you get data that's out of order. So let's say that uh, the vehicles are uploading their data or uh, I worked with another customer that was doing water sensors Right, and so they would upload their data maybe every 24 hours. Okay. Sometimes the data would come in late because uh, imagine one of those uh, covers on the, you know, the manhole covers on the street. Okay. You have a sensor underneath it, and every 24 hours it broadcasts. They just so, want to know if the thing's about to over flood. Yeah. Is that the yeah, idea? Yeah, what's the flow rate? What's the, the height of the water? But okay. what happens if a vehicle, a utility vehicle, parks right on top of where the... Oh, and that blocks the, the signal to the, the internet. Right, so maybe that's delayed. Okay. So what's nice about Spark is you could say, well, I'm collecting this data, I'm aggregating every five minutes, every mm -hmm. 10 minutes, but I want to create a buffer window that mm -hmm. in case uh, late arriving events happen, mm -hmm. I get to decide what to do. So I could say, well, maybe I'll, I'll let events show up up to five minutes late and still do the aggregation. Hmm. And beyond that, now it's really late. It doesn't matter anymore. So uh, Spark has that built right in. The, the only downside to uh, allowing for that, it's called a watermark in Spark. The only downside to that is that that takes up more space, right? It's using because more memory, you're buffering more resources. More information. Right. So if you try and buffer 24 hours of data, maybe that's not too practical. Mm. But the idea is sometimes events just come out of order, they get delayed a little yep. bit. So you have that built in. And then as far as Spark goes, you could run that native on machines or VMs. You could run it in a uh, containers, you could run it on your own, or you could use a managed service. So in Azure, we have uh, Databricks, which Databricks is the company behind Spark itself. Hmm. So they have a managed service that okay. runs in Azure. But Spark itself is it's open source, isn't it? Yes. Okay. The Spark itself is open source. Many of the tools around it. All right. And Databricks is not. The Databricks is a commercial product, I think. Yeah. They okay. built a commercial product around it. So okay. the, the tools around how you manage that Spark cluster are unique. To Databricks. It adds extra functionality to Spark, I think. Yep. Yep. All the management pieces. All right. uh, but Spark itself, at its core, is open source. Got it. And then um, the other, uh, so that's, that's a Spark as a service in Azure. There's also HD Insight, which, among other things in Azure, uh, supplies uh, Spark as one of its. Right. Features. HD Insight is the uh, Microsoft Azure's implementation of big data tools. Right. Yeah. And Spark is one of those right. tools. So. Now, the, the one throwing, challenge... We're throwing out a lot of technology, and most of yep. it is uh, Microsoft technology, but we should emphasize that this is not definite, this is not just Microsoft. You know, Spark is open source. Yep. Databricks is another company that we happen to host in Azure. Right. Which right. is kind of cool. Yep. And so, outside of... Uh, so, the, the one issue with Spark is that it's a bit of a learning curve. You have to... It's a coding language environment, so you're writing in Scala or Python okay. or R. So... Uh, there's there's a little bit of uh, I guess ramp up 
time to learn how to use the environment. Hmm. So it's super powerful, but it's more of a general purpose, just like if I gave you Visual Studio okay. and said this is a fantastic tool for writing code, but you still have to learn to write code. Uh, that's right. I should, I should get around yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there, we have another tool in Azure uh, called uh, Stream Analytics. Oh, yeah. So built completely for the streaming scenario. Yep. So the, this is independent of Databricks and Spark. Nothing to do with right. Spark. It's its own tool. The the nice thing about Stream Analytics is rather than you writing all the code to, let's say you wanted to talk to IoT Hub or Event Hubs, there's really no code to write. You pick from a drop-down list. I would like to take my input from this particular uh, Event Hub or IoT Hub, and now where's the data going? I'm going to write it to Cosmos DB or SQL database or a CSV file in, in Blob. You mm -hmm. basically choose it um, from a list, and then all that you have to accomplish at that point is writing your query. Okay. So and the, the queries are a little simpler because there's no code really that you could write. It's just a SQL query. It looks like SQL. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you you know select this field, that field, you know, maybe the the sum of some value, the average of some value. Is it identical to the SQL that, that I use in SQL Server? Uh, close, close, really okay. close. All right. Yeah, but then you'll see it, it's like window by, I don't know, five minutes or something. Oh, okay. And that would be an extension that's not in SQL Server, as far there's, as I know. There's some windowing. Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. well, I'm learning something already. Yep. So, <laughs> and then just like Spark, you also have the ability to deal with late arriving events. So, oh, interesting, okay. But instead of coding that up, it's it's more it's all of a, declarative. Yeah, I'm going to choose this option. I should option. say imperative. Yes. Right, yes, so I want this right. later arriving uh, event enablement, and I want it for 10 minutes or something. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, actually, but this, uh, SQL is uh, interesting. It doesn't tell you how it's going to run the query. You just express mm -hmm. what the query should do, and yep. it figures out how to do it, yeah. as so opposed to C Sharp, uh, which you step by step tell how to do things. Right, yeah. and, and again, that's that's similar to the Spark environment where you're coding everything exactly how you want it. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very cool. And you're doing a lot of. Th give me a give me an example of uh, another cool project that you've done that uses streaming. Uh, well, I mean, one that uh, you're involved in. We're we're dealing with um, uh, some some uh, airplane flight data, yeah. right? So data is coming in from these flights, location data. So the data is streamed. Uh, every couple of seconds there's data coming from these flights uh -huh. and those have to go through some type of event hub and eventually get written right so that's very very large uh, yeah lots of data. data coming in very yep. rapidly yep uh, I mentioned water sensors before yep. so I, I did work with a company that uh, specifically builds all sorts of uh, water meters for pH and water flow and salinity and hmm. that data comes streaming in so imagine you want to know what the flow rate is per hour or you want to know what the average pH is in a given hour or a given mm, day okay. so that's that's a, an example as well excellent uh, there's a lot of people out here who want to learn more mm -hmm. about uh, streaming and streaming data and streaming analytics and all this technology you mentioned mm -hmm. what's uh, where's a good place to start uh, well, for Stream Analytics, you can go to docs.microsoft.com, and there's a whole section on Stream Analytics, getting started, tutorials, quick starts. And if you have an Azure subscription, it's, it's built right in, so you could start very, very easily. Um, as far as Databricks, there is some um, Azure-specific documentation on docs.microsoft.com, but really if you go to the databricks.com site, mm -hmm. they have an entire curriculum there. And of course, there's as far as Spark in general, there's um, uh, classes on training sites like uh, Pluralsight and others. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I mean Spark is so ubiquitous and so popular right. these days. You can find materials just about everywhere. Yeah, another advantage to it not being Microsoft specific is it's mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of sources out there that other people are creating. Right, and it's a, a good point about it not being Microsoft specific. You can run the cluster locally on premises in your own mm -hmm. uh, data center, your own computer. You can develop locally. You know, you don't have to use something like Databricks until you're ready to deploy and you want that managed service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have an online presence? Uh, I'm. I, I spend most of my time on Twitter. Twitter, at, uh, yeah. yeah, Twitter, DMacagon. So between tech tweets and, and puns, you'll... Oh, you'll tell us a good pun. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was, I, I, I was uh, thinking the other day about, uh, you know, stenographers. If a stenographer got uh, convicted of a crime, would they receive a shortened sentence? <laughs> so, all right. David Macagon, thank he, you. He made me tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, David. Bye.
I watch Game of Thrones, I watch Barry. I really appreciate the technology that allows me to do that, especially when I'm sitting around with friends. But you know what I'm talking about, right, David?